Okay, so with that brief review of calculus, why do we even care about this stuff? Why do we care about slopes? Um, let's get back to microeconomics because it actually does matter. Um, what we've talked about so far is two different things. We've talked about budget lines or the feasible frontier or the production possibility frontier, whatever we want to call it. It's the limit of what you can do with your constraints. If you have the, some number of workers or some number of hours of free time um, or some amount of money that you can use to buy stuff, that kind of limits what you can do. Um, but then you also have some combination of things that provide you happiness. There's some combination of free time and grades that gives you some level of happiness. There's some combination of pizza and ice cream that gives you some level of happiness. Um, and so your goal in life is to make it so your happiness match or maxim or your choices of consumption of pizza and ice cream or free time and grade maximizes your happiness given whatever constraints you have. So we've talked about two marginal things here. We've talked about the marginal rate of substitution, which is the slope of the indifference curve. It's this theoretical trade-off between different inputs. So it's saying I would be equally happy if I failed this class but had tons of free time or didn't fail this class and had less free time. It's going to be the same amount of happiness and there's all sorts of combinations of free time and grades or all sorts of combinations of ice cream and pizza or all sorts of combinations of whatever. Um, that will create the same level of happiness. And the slope of that indifference curve is this marginal rate of substitution. Um, and so sometimes it's going to be steeper, sometimes it's going to be flatter. It depends on the derivative, which is why we care about the derivative, because we want to find what the slope is. Okay, so that's one marginal thing. There's a whole bunch of different ways of writing this. Um, this is on the course website, on the resources page. Um, there's a page dedicated in the resources section to explaining how to do this utility maximization thing. Um, this is important because you can actually figure out this marginal rate of substitution a few different ways. This part right here um, with the, the weird Greek letters here, this is that partial derivative thing that we found. So it's the partial derivative for the x part and the partial derivative for the y part. You divide those, that is the marginal rate of substitution. If you only know the prices of things, you can actually figure out the marginal rate of substitution using this price um, ratio here. Those are the same thing. So marginal rate of substitution is all of these different things here. It's also the marginal utility that you get from x and over the marginal utility you get from y. These are all mathematically the same thing. There are proofs in really dense textbooks that show you that these are the same thing. I don't care about those proofs. I just trust that they're the same thing because they are. Um, the other marginal thing that we've been talking about is this marginal rate of transformation, which is not theoretical. This is the actual trade-off between the inputs and um, kind of the feasible frontier or the budget. So if we go back to that example of airplanes, you have some number of workers and um, you're constrained basically by the resources you have and you can create some amount of airplanes. If you're a Lexi, you cannot get 100% in the class. It is impossible, it's beyond your feasible frontier. You have some combination of, of hours studied and grades, um, and you can find some combination there that will create some level of grade, um, but you can't go outside of that feasible set. You're constrained by what you can actually learn in the class. Um, so this marginal rate of transformation is also a slope. It's the slope of that feasible frontier, or what is called a budget line, or the production possibility frontier. It's whatever you're constrained by. It also has different slopes, and we saw that as well um, when we were talking about opportunity cost. Um, if you wanted to add one more worker to your production line for creating airplanes or whatever, um, in the early numbers of workers going from like three to four, that gets you a lot of airplanes, a lot of marginal airplanes. If you're going from like 15 workers to 16 workers, that doesn't actually get you a lot more marginal airplanes. That's just a tiny amount. And so that tiny amount is the slope. That's gonna be a pretty flat slope versus a really steep slope. And so we have two different slopes that we're working with. We have the slope of the indifference curve and we have the slope of the feasible frontier. And the reason we care about the calculus is because we want to find out what these slopes are and if we can find where the two slopes match and are identical, that will actually tell us the optimal level of P 
pizza and ice cream or the optimal level of um, hours studied and grade is to maximize our happiness. So the best combination of hours studied and free time or ice cream and pizza or whatever that we're, whatever we're trying to consume and we have a constraint on, it's where the ideal meets reality. So the ideal is these weird indifference curves that are imaginary, but wherever those meet reality, which is kind of your feasible frontier of what you can actually do, wherever those cross and are, are, they match and line up, that is where you maximize happiness. So if we look at this graph here, this is again, Alexi here. He has some level of final grade he can get. He has some number of hours of free time per day. These are different indifference curves, which means every point on this line right here gives him the same level of happiness. He could get 100 and have just a few hours of free time a day. Um, he could get a 50 and have a ton of free time a day. Um, but that would all be the same amount of happiness for him. Each of these lines here are different levels of happiness. As you move more inward, he's less happy. As you move outward and upward, he's more happy. He would love to be on an, an indifference curve up here. That would just make him super happy. He could have tons of free time a day. He would have like 150 on his final grade, and that would be delightful for him. The problem, though, is any indifference curves up in this world he can't get. That's not attainable um, because he's constrained by this feasible frontier. He can only get this high of a grade and he can't have more than 24 hours in a day. So he's constrained by this frontier here. So let's erase that really quick. Okay, so he would love to be on indifference curve four, but he can't be. Indifference curve one is lower. He could be down here. Any of these points down here are totally possible because they're inside this feasible frontier here, but he's not as happy as he could be. He could also be on this indifference curve. Um, where he's going to maximize his happiness is where this theoretical happiness lines up with reality, which is this feasible frontier, which is this point right here. Where those two lines or those two curves are tangent, which means they have exactly the same slope and they kind of line up right there, that point right there is the place where he will get the maximum amount of happiness given his preferences for grades and free time, um, which is that point right there. And the way you figure that out mathematically is you find the slope of this feasible frontier, you find the slope of the indifference curves, and then set them equal to each other and solve the math equation to figure out where they're the same. Um, and then that is how you maximize utility, mathematically there. Okay, so yeah, and that is where the marginal rate of substitution is equal to the marginal rate of transformation. All that really means is just the slope of the indifference curve is the same as the slope of the feasible frontier, where reality meets the ideal. Um, I would recommend pausing this video and looking at this the, the second part of the marginal revolution video. Um, where it explains the same idea using, again, pizza and coffee, but shows how you can move to higher indifference curves and lower indifference curves depending on your budget and depending on preferences. So take a minute, pause this video, go watch this one, and it'll explain this better um, using fancy animations, which is way better than pens. Um, and so watch that, and that will also help you um, wrap your head around this stuff and then come back um, so I can explain one last thing before we move on to the example where I will do this um, with math in person and it should be fun so watch that video and now you're back hopefully if not go watch the video um, so if you want to maximize utility and become the happiest possible given the constraints that you have this is the, these are the steps that you do, and this is what you'll be doing in your problem set, um, getting practice with this. First, this is optional because um, indifference curves are fake, um, but if you can plot an indifference curve, neat. Um, often I will give you an equation that says here is what the utility looks like, um, and I'll show you how to plot an indifference curve in Desmos. You can, you can see what that looks like at different levels of utility, but that is optional. Um, so what you really do is you figure out what is called the feasible set or what is often called the budget line. So you figure out your constraints. If you only have $60 to spend on pizza and ice cream, 
then you figure out, um, you can actually plot this and say you cannot go beyond this number of pizzas and ice creams. And you have like a set budget line that, that limits you on what you can actually purchase. We have this with Alexi too. He can't go beyond 24 hours of free time a day because that's a full day. He can't have 25 hours of free time. So that is a constraint. And he also has a constraint where he, because of his knowledge or his studying or whatever, he cannot get beyond a 90 on his final grade in this example, um, or beyond a hundred or whatever. So he's kind of limited by that. And that creates what is called the feasible set. So once you have this feasible set, you have to figure out the marginal rate of transformation, which is the slope of that line, which means it's the derivative. Okay, then you use calculus and prices and some other mathy things to figure out the marginal rate of substitution, which is the slope of the indifference curve. So um, we have the slope of the budget line or the feasible set. We have the slope of the indifference curves. And then we want to make it so that they match. And wherever they match is going to be the ideal level of consumption to maximize utility. And so if we set those equal to each other, we say marginal rate of transformation equals marginal rate of substitution. And then we use algebra to solve for x and y. Then that will tell us the points that we need to consume the number of pizzas and the number of ice creams or the number of hours of free time and the grade that we need to get to maximize our happiness. And that is how we do it. So if you go to the resources page um, for utility maximization, there will be a video walkthrough of how to do this in addition to a, a written out version with all of the math and all of the steps. You can see step by step how to do this um, and it should hopefully be clear and fun. So go over there and watch and learn.